In this lesson, we are going to take a look at how to insert blocks in AutoCAD. Before we talk about inserting blocks, let's talk about why we use them. A block is simply a collection of drawing objects to create some sort of object, such as a chair or an electrical component. There are three main reasons why we use blocks. The first one is it just makes it easier to manipulate the object. Instead of having that perfect crossing or window to select it, I can just simply pick on it and it's one object. The second reason that we use it is reduced file size. Having one object takes up less file space than having several different lines. The last reason that we use it is for standardized components. In the case of this drawing that I have here, I want to insert some doors. I really don't want to waste any time drawing doors when I can just simply have one pre-made and insert it into all of the spaces. It also helps me maintain consistency. If I have several different people creating drawings, I don't want them each to create doors however they want. I want them to use a standard door so that we have consistency across all of our drawings. The insert block command is located on the home tab in the block panel. You can also type I then press enter at your keyboard. After starting the insert command, I'm given the insert dialog box. And the first thing that I'm going to do is decide which local block I want to choose. So a local block is one that has already been defined in this drawing and is available in this drop down list. Local blocks appear because they've already been inserted from another drawing previously, or perhaps because they were just saved in the template. If there are several blocks that I use over and over again, it's a good idea to save these into the template so that they will be available when needed. I'll go ahead and select the door 36 inch here. Then from here, I want to decide if I want to specify my insertion point on screen or clear that to bring it in a certain XY coordinate. Most of the time, we're going to want to specify where the block goes. There are some situations where we might want one to come in at zero, zero. For example, a lot of title blocks are drawn relative to zero, zero. So if I was inserting a title block, I might clear this option but I'll go ahead and check it so I can specify where this door is going to go. Next, I can specify a scale. In the case of this door, I want it to come in at full scale, so I'm not going to adjust it. Notice that I have a uniform scale option selected. If I remove that, it's possible to change the scale in different directions. And then finally, I have a rotation angle, so I can either type in an angle or specify on screen. To begin with, I'm just going to accept the defaults here and click OK. And as you can see, the block is coming in here, and when it was created, the insertion point was specified to be the corner of the door here. So that allows me to just simply snap to a point to place my block. I'm going to place another copy, but this time I'm going to rotate it. So I'll choose Insert, and for my rotation angle, I can either type in a value if I know it, or I can choose Specify on Screen. I'll choose Specify on Screen, then click OK. I'll now come in and click where I want this door to go. And it's instantly in the rotate command. So then I can go ahead and rotate, in this case, 90 degrees to place my door. I'm going to place a few more doors here. This time I'm going to choose the 30 inch door. And I'm going to go ahead and leave specify on screen for rotation selected and click OK. So now I can come in here and just simply click where I want this to go. And it's in the rotate command. I'll go ahead and click to the right to rotate at the zero degree angle. Now, unfortunately, there's not a quick way to insert multiple blocks. So I'll just press enter to repeat the last command. And this time I'm going to need to rotate this one. So I'll select a spot and I'll rotate it down. Now in this particular case, I actually wanted my door to swing the opposite direction. And I can do this by mirroring it in place, but I can also do this as I bring it in by putting in a negative scale factor. So I'll start with an example right up here. I want a mirror image of this door essentially over in this opening. So I'll insert another block. I'm going to go ahead and clear my specify on screen for rotation since I know I want it to come in at zero. And then I'm going to put in negative one for my X scale factor. Click OK, and as you can see, it has mirrored it horizontally. So as you could probably guess, I can also put in negative values for Y to mirror it vertically as well. It's also important to make sure that you insert blocks on the appropriate layer. 
Some blocks will allow you to change its layers so that you can actually see the color change difference. In other cases, it's just simply the insertion point that is changing. So in the case of these doors, they're red and in the door layer, but if I select them, I can see that I inserted them on the A walls layer. So what this means is that these doors will disappear if I freeze the walls layer. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those and put them into the appropriate A doors layer so that I don't have any strange behavior if I freeze any layers. In addition to local blocks, we also have what we call global blocks, which is just simply another drawing file that I want to insert into this one. In this case, I've got a sliding glass door that needs to go in the back here, and I actually have it as a separate drawing file. If I go to insert, I won't see it in the drop down list because it hasn't been defined in this drawing yet. So instead, I will click Browse to go and find this drawing file. So here in my class files, I'm going to choose Door, Sliding Glass, and Open. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK to accept my defaults here. Then I can click to place it. Again, ideally, I want to put that in on the correct layer. So I'll go ahead and change that to A Doors. And in fact, I'll set A Doors as the current layer in case I want to insert any more. Now that I've inserted it once, it has a local definition. So if I go to insert again, the door sliding glass is available in the drop down list now. So it makes it very easy to go ahead and insert additional copies. To summarize, we use blocks because it gives us reduced file size, it allows us to have standardized components, and it makes it easier to manipulate objects. We can insert local blocks, which are blocks that are already stored in the current drawing. And we can also insert global blocks, which are blocks saved as separate drawing files. That concludes this look at inserting blocks in AutoCAD.